So good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to share this topic, how to culture cell in different force. So we are following this schedule for biomaterial part. So today, we are focusing on this part, how you culture the cell under external force, cause uh, your cells in body, they can feel many external force. For example, skin, they are tensioned, your muscle also stretch or compressed, or sometimes neuron, they can be excited by electrical cue. And then when you inject some molecule or some solution in your body fluid, your, your osmolarity will change. So, so that's why. And then naturally, your body has some magnetic field. So those are the things to consider when you culture the cell to mimic the biomimetic condition. So last week, we are talking about how to analyze cell on or in biomaterial. And then when you culture the bio, cell the biomaterial and then you analyze based on entity, first generation, CCK, second generation, MTS, third generation, depending on their some incubation time and insoluble or soluble tetrajolume and then their accuracy and sensitivity and then most most accurate accuracy things to check the live stage is based on live and death staining so calcine am and then live stain depending on the cell membrane rupture they are stained into the cell, cell cytosol or the dna also stained so you have to consider this point. What is the meaning of the red and green signal? And then when they are combined them together, what does it mean? And then in terms of proliferation, you can manually count the cell number, or you can indirectly check the proliferation using this above MTS assay. Or you can directly die with EDU or BRDU, which can replace to the one of the analog of your DNA during S phase for proliferation. And then if you want to check some direct cytotoxicity, LDH, they are originally located in cytosol, but when your cell membrane rupture, LDH is liquid, leakage, and then they can be detected. So LDH is some direct cytotoxicity test. And then further, if you want to do analyze what is your cell fate when they are die? You can check the apoptosis assay using annexin PI staining. So you can check early apoptosis, late apoptosis, live or necrosis, depending on the annexin positive or PI positive. And then if you fix the cell and then die use the PI staining solution, you can check their sub G1 fraction. So you can also know the apoptosis signaling. And then you can also check uh, G0, G1 phase, and S phase or G2 phase. And then when you culture the cell on different substrate, you can stain with phalloidin, actin, and DAPI. And then you can check their cell morphology, or in actin intensity, or DAPI number, or cell area, or cell elongation, any kind of parameter related to the cell that can be investigated. And then if you check the vinculin, the most important thing is that you have to preserve the calcium and magnesium. So you have you should not use PBS without any calcium and magnesium. So if we want to check the vinculin in terms of ICC or PCR, you have to use HBSS or PBS, which can incorporate calcium and magnesium ions to preserving this vinculin or focal adhesion protein. Yeah. This is from the last week. Please remember this. And then this week, we are talking about how to culture cell in different forms. So we are talking about cell stretching, compression, osmolarity, EMF, electromagnetic field, and electrical cue. We are, we are having C phase machine and shear stress. So this is from our recent biometric review paper. You can refer this paper for, for more information. So as you can see, this, sorry. 
Yeah, so this Yeah, you can see the cell when they attach on the bottom, they can feel different external force. Shear flow, let's imagine this is an endothelial cell in the blood vessel. The blood flow like this, and then the cell can feel shear flow. Shear means aside from you, not directly. Yeah. This is some uh, direction of the blood flow, but cell attaching on this blood blood surface, blood vessel, and then this is the shear flow. And then magnetic field or tension or compression force. So tension is when you stretch your muscle. Compression most of the time like cartilage or when muscles are compressed. And then electrical electricity, neurogenesis or neuromuscular junction. They are all connected, connected by electricity. And then some other time ultrasound because because if you visit the hospital for rehab, they are using ultrasound machine to regenerate fast. So that's why people are working with the ultrasound as well. And then beside of the external force, we can also modulate the cell using some geometry, now topology or symphonies. This is an indirect way to induce some external force to the cell. Because when some cells are occupied by this rectangular or triangular or this kind of shape, the cell can feel some stress from this confined geometry. So cell can feel something. Or when your cells are elongated external, ex from external uh, morphology, the cell also can feel something, right? Also, stiff, depending on the stiffness, the cell can feel differently. So the cell spreading well on stiffness, on stiffened matrix, or cell maintain their round shape on soft matrix. So those are you have to consider in terms of mechanobiology, how you in influence the cell. And then what will happen to the cell? So this is some cell membrane. This is a cell membrane. And then this is some integrin. Integrin is some receptor that can bind to the extracellular matrix. Okay? And then when once the cell binds to the extracellular matrix through the integrin, there are strong adhesion protein called focal adhesion, consisting of talin, vinculin, FAC, paxlin, SRC, gyacin, or alpha actinin. And then this focal adhesion physically connected to actin. Now this actin also connected to the, this nucleus membrane, outside and inner membrane, through this uh, link complex. Link complex meaning that some protein or some structure which can connect actin or nucleus membrane. So consisting of mespring 1, 2, sun 1 and 2 and 4. Those are called link complex. And then, this link complex, they are also physically connected to this chromatin structure. So that is why if you shake this integrin using ECM or through the, this body fluid, this integrin connected to the actin and link complex and nucleus membrane and then chromatin. So you can directly and in very short time, like few milliseconds, you can change the chromatin structure. When you change the chromatin structure, you can change some mRNA expression as well as protein translation. So that is why people want to focus why this, how and why external force can change the cell behavior or cell fate. And then some cell, they, uh, they are combined with another cell which is called yeah, cadrin, cadrin, like v cadrin or e cadrin. So those two cell cell contact or cell exchange contact, they are synergetically or reversely affect the cell fate or behavior. And then this integrin or cell cell contract cadrin, they can cross talk each other. Okay? And then uh, when some mechanical force induced, 
some receptor except the integrin, like PAG1 and 2, they are activated, especially from the tension force. So PAG1 and 2 is a very key receptor which are, which are mostly activated by tension force. So when PAG1 and 2 are activated, calcium are influx more, and then more, influx, more calcium influx, and some protein are translocated into the nucleus, and then they can activate the cell fate or cell behaviors. So this is a normal mechanism, what, what is the underlying mechanism for mechanobiology. And then beside mechanobiology, normally people are working with the growth factor and growth factor receptor mediated things. Actually, when you want to induce some bone, you can treat the BMP to the metacarbon stem cell, and then BMP can combine to BMP receptor. And the BMP receptor, when they combine, through certain SMAD uh, or SRC pathway, they can trans increase the transcription factor related to the bone morphology, bone morphogenesis, like OCN or Osterix or other lungs too. So, but this kind of uh, chemical mediated signaling take time, like 10 seconds, something like. But one 10,000 times more fast, the physical signaling within one millisecond, they can activate the chromatin or chromosome. So there is why nowadays people want to focus on the physical mediated signaling, not the growth factor mediated signaling. Because this is a very well known and that there is not much of remaining things. So nowadays people are working on this, how you modulate the ECM or external force to change the cell fate or cell behaviors for tissue regeneration. And then sometimes this extra, extra force mediated things and then chemical mediated things, they can cross to each other, of course. So as a biomaterial scientist or a biologist, people are working with that. So you can see many good nature science or cell paper regarding this point. So first, cell stretching using flex cell. So this is based on the, so we have this flex cell machine. Basically, flex cell is consists of this a base and plate. And then you can buy collagen coated one or non coated one, this plate. Then this plate is consists of these five bioflex with loading post and without loading post tissue train uniflex HT bioflex. But only we have this uniflex. Because uniflex, I will show you later, they induce maximum 12% strain and then but we can majorly uh, tension in one direction. But if we use biflex, bi means by, right? So X and Y, y axis, they, those are both axis that can be tensioned. That's why we are using this uniflex. So how they change the tension strain? So this is loading post already fixed. This is your plate, and you culture the cell on the plate of elastomer. This is elastomer, they are coated by collagen, so the cell can attach very well. In rest position, they're like this. But using vacuum, this is the vacuum side. When vacuum are activated, this elastomer are stretched. And then from this stretch force induced by vacuum, your cell are stretched like this. So those are, this system is based on this biflex. So they mention this and this at the same time. But we are using only uniflex because of their direction of the, this mm. elastomer, they only stretch in one direction, one axis. So this is a basic mechanism. So I will show you one YouTube regarding this, how you start this flexor system. To assemble your flex cell tension base plate for use with six well culture plates, you will need your black base plate with attached tubing, the four rubber gaskets, 
your four desired loading stations, four culture plates, silicone lubricant, and a clear acrylic window. Optional weights can also be used to help seal the culture plates during loading. First, place your loading stations into the base plate, pressing down gently to ensure proper placement. Next, just apply bit. silicone lubricant to the cover, top and top edges of each of the loading post. Ensure that you remove and reapply lubricant before each experiment. Plate. But if you put so much of this oil, this machine is damaged. So then take your 6 volt culture plate and fit the plate. gasket around the bottom Last edge of the culture plate. Rubber packing is Place the culture plate and gasket directly atop release. a loading station. So Press along the edges of the gasket to ensure it is properly sealed in the base plate and that and no parts are folded uh, under. Once everything. all four stations are ready, place and the then clear you can acrylic the cell window on this over the inside, culture plates. And then put this if needed, acrylic plate 5 and to 10 weight. pounds or 2.3 to 4.5 system, kilograms of additional uh, weight this, this may be placed over the window to help the seal the base plate. Your tension base plate is now ready so for So our system is like Flex link some modulator and the computer using monitor and the base plate and this base plate is incubated in incubator. Yeah, so to mimic the 37 degree Celsius and then 5% CO2 level. So only remember thing is that please do not use many oil to cover this plate. If you use a lot, this whole system is damaged. This whole system is around 5,000. How much in English? 50,000 bucks, 500,000 bucks, something like. That. Okay. So yeah, this is our system now. This is some software, and you can change train frequency and then their sinus curve. So you can see the detail in here. And then they provide many type of the this culture plate. But if you see, you can see this uniflex is only one direction. Yeah, not easy to see. So this is trapezoidal tissue strainer. Tissue strain is there are some defect in the middle. So you can incorporate the cell and gel together, and then they are simultaneously stretched. Circular form tissue, you can put some tissue here and then their X and Y axis all together, they are stretched from the all other side. Yeah, tissue trainer defect is straight trapezoidal tissue in here, but they are trapezoidal structure. Biflex, they are stretch X and Y axis together. So let's see, this is some our yeah, oh, sorry. This movie is provided by Song Min, so let's see the video. So as you can see, uh, this. This is some, um, okay, separated. And then, this is uniflex, so that is why, from this structure, rubber, they are stretched on one knee, one side, like right? up and down. Not much of this axis, only this axis, they are stressed, okay? But as you can see, maybe in this manufacturer, they mention, uh, regardless of your position of the cell, they are stretched homogeneously, but it's not true. If, if we observe some cell behavior, they are not homogeneously stretched. Maybe this part, they are con directly contact of post, they are stretched mostly, and then some, uh, some cell inside, they are also stretched a little bit. So when you go outside, they are more stretched, but when, you, when your cells are inside, they are less stretched. But um, generally, they are stretched. So using this cell stretching system, the most uh, prominent phenomenon is like this. Let's say your cells are, are cultured on this elastomer, 
And then if you stretch like this, the cell are elongated like this. Okay, this is um, perpendicularly they are elongated, they are bodily position. So this is a control cell, they are randomly positioned, but when you strain like this, most of the cell, they are elongated like this. So you can calculate the angle of a cell, yeah, like this. And then uh, using this flexor system, recently the, this group published in Cell 2012, very new. So the title is like heterochromatin driver nuclear softening protects the genome against the mechanical stress induced damage. So let's briefly read this in brief abstract. When tissue are stressed, cell respond via two distinct mechanosensory mechanisms to protect the genome from damage and maintain the tissue homeostasis. When they are stretched so far, the nucleus also can be damaged. So somehow, cytosol, they maintain the structure, but the nucleus is more easy to break down. So that's why the cell has to make some own protective mechanism from the external force to maintain the tissue homo homeostasis. So first, rapid heterochromatin mediated mechanosensing independent of non cellular mechanosensor derives calcium dependent nuclear softening. Because when your nucleus is so stiff, they are not easy to adjust the external force. They easily break down, damage. That is why the cell can feel, oh, this is too damaged. And then the, automatically the nucleus are softened. And if the mechanistic stress persists, perg a second tissue level reorganization occurs, made by cell cell contact to redistribute the mechanical energy to prevent the forced transmission to the nucleus. Why is this? This is uh, cytosol orientation. Originally, they like this. And then over time, your damage, the cells are damaged too much from the stretch they are elongated like this to prevent, to reorganize the stress distribution to minimize the damage. So let's see, nuclear deformation. So first, uh, origin like this, and then when, when they are stretched at higher damage, higher force, the nucleus are reduced the nuclear stiffness is reduced. So H33, K9, M3 leverage down. And then over time, after the cytosol reorientation, they are reversed. But also, its nuclear direction also change, yeah. Perpendic perpendicular to external force. So they try to like this. They, they apply 5 to 40% of a stretch. And then they check the, uh, elong how they are elongated. So 5% is very small tension. So not much of change of elongation. But under 40% and even 20%, they start to elongate it. Perpendicular to stretch axis, right? So within six hours, they are elongated. And then they check the nuclear shape parameter using this major, minor, or height. Also, this aspect ratio increased, which means they are, the nucleus are also elongated. So flattness index, flatten means the height of nucleus is more shrinking, right? More shrinking because of the more tension force. And then under this mechanism, they want to check uh, what will happen to chromatin level, which means DNA transcription level. So they found uh, this over time, 30 minutes or six hours, something are changed. So cluster one and two, both are they are do like this, which means somehow they go down, but at six hours, they go up. So what, what, what does it this? So and then through this uh, up and down, some RNA expression, they check 
H3, H3K9 B3, this is some histone modification protein. When, they have, when, when the cell have high H3, H3K9 B3, which means they preserve their, uh, they do not activate the RNA expression. But when they go down, which means the RNA expression are, uh, sorry, uh, this is some, they are activating RNA expression. And then when they go down, RNA expression is depleted, and then they come back. So HXK9 B3 to level is go down continuously under 5%. But 40%, they go down and go up. And then what does it mean? So this is regulated by H3K9 B methylation or cell substrate junction, protein localization, any kind of histone modification. Histone is inside of the protein of nucleus. So when certain histone methylation or isolation, they change, which means uh, DNA to RNA transition will change. So under this mechanism also, they want to check how the nucleus membrane change. At 5%, Mm, little wrinkle. Wrinkle means this is this is a wrinkle. This is intact. Wrinkle means some nucleus membrane are not ruptured. Some changed like this. Little bit changed, but at 40% change initially, and then the level is go down. So this kind of trend is up, up here under tensional force, and then. This tensional force that can change the cell fate through the nucleus membrane change and then chromatin histone modification change. And then using this flexor machine, you can change many types of the stretch. So normally, sine, half of sine, like this. Or just sine wave. Triangle wave. Squared wave. You can you can choose either of one. And then the frequency and then how they are stretched and what's the formation of the wave, you can change all the time. And then per 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 one day, how many hours will you apply also you can change. You can turn on the machine twenty four hour all day or just one hour per day. And then this is another machine. Not in our lab, but this is more simple. So this is PDMS mold. If you culture the cell on this PDMS mold, and then they are stretched like this. So I will show you one YouTube. machine you can also compress diversely okay so and then next one is cell compression you can compress the cell using this system actually we don't have this system at the moment but same composition computer black cell FX 5000 base plate and then if you see it will be compli complicated to understand, but let's imagine. Uh, this is some sample holder, and then you incubate the cell and gel together. This is not only cell, cell and gel together. And then, this is some upper, upper cover, and then if you press this uh, sample holder a little bit pressed. Sample holder is not very steep material. They can be changed under force. So when the sample holder are compressed from the upper force, this sample consisting of gel and cell, they are also compressed like this. Okay. So I will show you later how they are morphology. And then in another way, simply, let's see, this is 2D culture, you culture the cell on the tissue culture plate. And then you can do 3D culture, this bottom, gel and cell together, and then if you put some wave, 
한국말로 추 on the top of your gel and then they are compressed. Okay? So when you using some uh, specific uh, 100 mg or 1 kg weight, weight on the gel and then gel are compressed statically. So this is some statically you can compress the gel and sell together. But this machine you can dynamically compress. Okay? So this is some easy, most easiest way. Uh, this most this this is the easiest way how you apply the compression force statically. And then this machine, if we, if we buy or if we set up, you can dynamically or statically compress the gel and cell together. So you have to understand at the moment, as far as I know, it's not, it's not easy to compress the cell itself. Always you have to incorporate the cell and gel together to compress. So what kind of cell do you have in your mind? Chondrocyte, okay, cartilage, cell, and bone, osteoblast, and then sometimes muscle. So if you mimic this external force condition you, for those bone formation, cartilage formation, or muscle formation, this is a very good study. So if you design your material, if you design your cell study, you can also consider this point. How you apply the biomimetic external force to your cell on the biomaterial. And then you can apply the shear stress. So simply, shear stress can be obtained by the, your shaker. We can have orbital shake. Orbital means circularly this plate is shaped. Or left and right shaker. Using the shaker, you can, the media is fluid, left and right, or sometimes rotationally, and then cell can feel shear stress. So using this shear stress condition, the cell can induce something. Because, for example, endocellular cell, they always stress by the shear force of the blood flow. And then when you mimic that condition, the cell will be happy, happy for differentiate or to activate more endocellular cell-like behaviors. Okay? The other one is a more complicated system using microfluidic. If you culture the cell on the culture plate and then using microfluid device, just you inject the culture media one millimeter per minute, something like that. And then using this flow, the cell can feel sure stress, and then they can differentiate better or suppress some morphological behavior depending on your condition. If it's too harsh, maybe the cell can be damaged. If the sure stress is proper, the cell can be happy. Okay, so that is why you have to try to consider how you manipulate the cell under sure stress using microfluid system or simply shaking. So as you can expect, the shaking system is not very, is not very um, homogeneous. Because when you shake the cell or culture plate, you imagine the media can shake at the same time, but because of the culture plate confined spacer, the water fluid direction is not homogeneous. They are very up and down. Very not homogeneously they apply. So that is why we highly recommend to use microfluid system. But if you don't have any time and machine, using this one at least. And osmol osmolality. So osmolality is you can change osmolality using PEG or a monitor. So osmolality is uh, basic meaning is number of the molecules. So let's imagine uh, this is your cell, okay? So let's imagine when cell are spread like this, according to this image, the some water from inside they go out, right? But when they're compressed 
also the water can go out, but the morphology is maintained like this. So actually this is from this is from the cell spreading depending on the stiffness. When when you, when your cell culture on high stiffness, the cell spread more, and then water efflux. Efflux means to go outside, and then cell volume decrease. But at the same time, you maintain the attached area, but very short time you can change the cell volume using osmolarity. If you change osmolarity, which means low molecular low molecular low number of molecular outside, and then you cell feel oh outside is low molecular weight and low osmolarity, and then the osmolarity should be compensated. So that's why water inside uh, sorry an opposite. The high molecular weight, they are a high molecular number are there. The cell inside of the cytosol, the water can be effluxed, and then they are compensated. So using high osmolarity, the cell volume decrease. But in opposite, if you put the cell in low, uh, low molecular, low molecular number, which means low osmolarity, what will happen? Cell feel oh, inside more high osmolarity and outside low osmolarity, so water can go inside to compensate. So I will explain later one more time. So anyhow, from this osmolarity, what will happen? So let, as you know, this is a stress relaxation and control side. So small number means more fast stress relaxation. So when the stress are induced to the extracellular matrix, they are deformed easily in fast stress relaxation. So control side, they can proliferate. So compared to low stress relaxation time, high fast stress relaxation time, they can differentiate or they can proliferate, they can enlarge their cytosol. So area of single cell, they are increased in fast relaxation time. So at the same time, you can, in fast stress relaxation, but you induce high osmotic pressure. High osmotic pressure, which means that the water inside, uh, high osmotic pressure, so water can go outside, right? Because the cell can maintain normal osmotic pressure. So always the water can go low to high. Yeah. So because the cell membrane, we have a cell membrane in the cell, so only in a very short time, short time is few seconds. Within few seconds, water can go outside easily. But the protein inside of cell membrane is not easy to go outside or go inside. So that is why if you consider the osmolarity, always consider, consider the cell, consider the water inside of the cell or water outside the cell. So the high osmotic pressure which means higher number of the molecule outside than inside of the cell, and then water can go outside from the cell to the extracellular environment. And then what will happen? The cell can feel compressed because the cell water can go outside and there's the cell volume should decrease. So cell volume should decrease, which means compressed force. So compared to normal, they are compressed, and then single cell area decrease, and then this proliferation rate also decrease. And then osmotic pressure, they are increased, which means that they are more compressed while they happen to this very fast relaxation time. Under fast relaxation, normally this LDH level is very low, but when they are compressed, and then the cell cannot uh, enlarge their volume or it cannot proliferate. This LDH, the cell membrane rupture protein, is increased. And then this 1 beta uh, procytokine expression and then 
Adam TS4 and MMP13, which is the met, uh, met, matrix proteinase or pro apoptotic cytokine gene suppression level increase over when they are more compressed by osmotic pressure. Okay? But this is some their control group of slow sex lactation. Under slow sex lactation, what will happen? The cell cannot make two. The cell cannot proliferate. Why? The cell cannot regulate the cell system easily. That is why they want to compare fast isolation, more easy to change the ECM, slow relaxation time, more hard to change the ECM, and then this hard to ECM change is similarly happen when osmotic pressure is applied to the cell. So basically, this paper in Nature Material uh, under very this uh, fast relaxation, the cell control site can enlarge, and then slow cell relaxation, the cell cannot proliferate because they are confined. So they can proliferate, they are confined, and then when the cell are confined in their own volume, one beta is increased, and the MMP13 and Adam S4 and cell death increase because this is some dead signaling for chondrocyte. So if you culture the cell, especially chondrocyte, the chondrocyte can proliferate under this very uh, slow cell selection. And then if you culture another cell, not chondrocyte, neuron cell, also neuron cell or MSC, they cannot change the ECM, they never good, okay? When you think about the gel, AMA, if you incorporate your gel in gelma, what will happen? If your gelma have very elastic material, right? So elastic means the cell cannot change the ECM. They, the cell cannot never win the ECM. And then they will die easily until they are degraded. So that is why if you make some degraded, degraded Degradable gelma is good for cell, but the gelma is not degraded that much. When the cells are inside of the gel, they never survive. They are dead easily. So that is why people are, want to utilize some collagen as one, or here on an exit, or even arginate, because they are physically cross-linked, and then the cell can easily modulate or change the issue by themselves. Hmm. Yeah, please refer to Nature Material paper and the PNS paper late, uh, later to these things. So I want to highlight why osmolarity is important. So osmolarity, they change within 20 seconds. This is before normal. And then as, after osmolarity compression with PEG, they are 20 seconds the cell height change very fast, right? And then this height change maintain two hours, and then they are recovered. So actually, this cell they have some compensation mechanism, so they never continuously compress. When they compress, and then they make they make another some cellular protein, and their their compressed structure are, are recovered after two hours. And then, what's, how they change the cell fate? This is some um, MSC on the glass. And hypotonic, hypotonic means that more, less osmolarity, hypoosmolarity. When the hypoosmolarity, what will happen? The water can go from outside to inside of the cell. Always, osmolarity change, the water can go low to high, okay? Hypo means the outer extracellular low and the inside of the cell high, so water can go inside. And then cell volume increase, and then they, this can accelerate the adipose tissue differentiation of the stem cell. So adipotenic is increased here. And then what happened to osteogenesis? So stiff. As you can know, stiff matrix can accelerate 
LP, particle cell, which means osteogenesis. Soft, less osteogenesis, right? But soft, but they can induce hypertonic. Hypertonic means that more high osmolarity. The cell, the inside of the water inside of the cell, they can go out from low to high. And then hypertonic means which means they are compressed. So compressed phenomenon is to mimic the bone compression. So that's why bone morphogenesis is more appeared. So osteogenesis is increased even in even under soft ECM. So higher lungs to level go down, lungs to or go up, lungs to and BSP. And PPR gamma also increase in hypotony. Okay? So in this article they mentioned stiffness, osmolarity, doesn't matter. The important thing is that cell volume. When cell volume change, depending on the stiffness, depending on osmolarity, depending on your cell type, when cells are compressed, more prone to osteogenesis. But when cells are enlarged, they are more prone to adipogenesis. This is their finding. So I mentioned a lot of the osmolarity. So why the osmolarity? Actually, the theoretically, osmolarity is molarity multiplied dissociation factor. So let's read, read this paragraph. The molarity of solution is not always the same as the solution osmolarity. This is because some solute ion compound like NaCl dissociate into separate particles when dissolved with water. For either solution, the solution of osmolarity equal is molarity times dissociation factor. The number of ions form from one particle of the solute when placed in water, which means you have one more NaCl. So why is the osmolarity in water? So NaCl is decomposed Na plus Cl minus, right? So one more Na, one more Cl minus. So in terms of osmolarity, two, two more. This is an uh, assumption based on NaCl is totally dissociated into the ion. Mm. But so that's why if you if you assume that dissociation factor is one, the osmolarity is same as molarity. Yeah. But every solute has a dissociation factor or osmotic coefficient. For any substance that does not dissociate into ions when dissolved in water, such as glucose, urea, or mannitol, the dissociation factor is one because they never ionize. And the solution osmolarity is the same as the its molarity. So one more glucose, one osmolarity glucose. One more mannitol, one osmolarity mannitol. Okay? But the dissociation factor for ideal solution of NaCl is two because they are fully, when they are fully ionized to Na plus Cl minus. One NaCl, they can be ionized, one Na plus and one Cl minus, so this is number two. Given that that compound is made of two ions. However, many ionized substances do not completely dissociate in water. For example, a particle formed when NaCl has water include Na plus Cl minus and some dissociation NaCl. Theoretically, NaCl, they are fully ionized. So one should be two. But this is not reality. So calculate the solution factor for NaCl as 25 degree is 1.8 particle per NaCl, which means some part, 0.2, is not dissociated. They are maintained as NaCl. This means one millimole solution of NaCl would be 1.8 milliosmol. So one more, same as one osmolarity, one millimole, same as one milliosmolarity. But this is some um, NaCl they are dissociated, so 1.8. So that is why we are using magnetol or PEG. Magnetol PEG, they never degraded, theoretically. So that is why if we put magnetol or PEG in our body, they never dissociate, so dissociation factor is number one. So 
one molar of vanitol is one osmolarity increase. Okay. And then if we want to, so what is the normal osmolarity in your body? 300 milliosmol, milliosmol, not osmol, which means 0 .3, 300 millimol, which means your uh, blood flow, blood has, except the cell, they have NaCl, so a phosphate, ion, any kind of ion. So those are combining all kinds of ion is induced 300 milliosmol. That is why media without any supplement means FBS or PS, they are 300 milliosmol. Okay. Nowadays you are we, we we buy the media, but 10 years ago we make it using our powder. So always this kind of machine you have to use it after making the missile culture media. In this time, Professor Shim's lab next to our I train, he had this osmolarity machine, so you can use it after get, getting permission. So hyper means that over 300 milliosmol. Hypo, very similar, but hypo is less than 300. So what is the osmolarity of DW? Zero. Because distilled water, which means doesn't have any ion, right? Theoretically zero. So that's why you have a media with a supplement and DW, 300 milliosmol media, zero and DW, and they combine them two to one, why the osmolarity? 200 milliosmolarity. Okay? You have to, you, you can calculate this one. Okay, and then in another PEG, so how you calculate the PEG osmolarity? Actually, PEG is a little bit different from the manitou. So according to this paper, they mentioned from this uh, calculation, when you use PEG 400, which we have in iTrain, 0% uh, zero osmolarity, 1.5% weight volume, weight per volume, which means 37.5 milliosmol. 75 milliosmol, 150 milliosmol. And then this is some, uh, apply this specific kilopascal osmolarity pressure to the gel. Okay? So PEG, using this reference, if you add PEG in the media, 1.5% per volume, you can increase the 37.5 milliosmol. Okay? According to this, according to this formula. And then if we want to add uh, one more osmolarity using one more magnetone, this is 1,000 milliosmol because they are not ionized, okay? So next, uh, EMP machine. So we are making this EMP machine in-house in iTrain. So this is a um, picture of EMP machine, computer, an incubator, an electronic fan, and if you open this incubator, you can see some coil, like this. Yeah, Gauss meter. Gauss meter is that you can uh, investigate what, how much the EMF field, magnetic field, and apply in the system. So this EMF generator, this blue one is for cooling to use the water, tap water. Below this blue line, you can see yellowish coil. So through this yellow coil, they are coil each other of left and right. And if we put your cell culture plate in the middle, the cell can feel the magnetic field through this direction. This direction, not this direction. Because this coil, you can imagine this direction. So you can change uh, this magnetic field frequency or current, and then, yeah, so this coil is called Helmholtz coil driving machine. So you can change the current and Hertz, and you can get specific uh, magnetic field. So what is the example of the magnetic field? 
So many people want to use magnetic field because magnetic field they are naturally generate in your body. Yeah. So they are applied in anti-cancer therapy, potential direction, engineering application, any kind of thing. So in biomedical field, we are using magnetic field to induce more IPSC or more neural-like cell from fibroblast. So using uh, magnetic field activated gold nanoparticle and then they induce the BAM factor, BAM factor, to type the programming to the neuron from the fibroblast. And then at the same time, they induce magnetic field. And then through this magnetic field from different heritage, they confine these 20 uh, Tesla under this 100 hertz is good for TGM particle cell on this nanoparticle structure. So especially for neuron or muscle, if we apply magnetic field, they are good for differentiation, which is revealed by many papers. But in our eye chain, we are continuously doing some something regarding this, but they are not homogeneously we can get some good result. But theoretically, when you apply the magnetic field in proper range, it's good for cell in terms of proliferation or differentiation. <coughs> for detail, please refer to this paper, Nature Nanotech. And then electrical Q machine recently we bought. So which is called C phase. So this machine we have in this same three state incubator. So she face she pays electrical machine. So we can change sorry duration four to ten milliseconds per each electrical cube and then voltage zero to forty voltage per centimeter and the frequency <coughs> of up to one hundred hertz. And then if you apply this electrical cube on neural machine, they are more differentiated or more proliferate. And then if you make some electroconductive material, and then you can culture the cell on that electroconductive material, those can synthetically affect the cell. So this is some C phase device. Actually, this is some this previous machine is some generator, electrical generator, and then if you put this uh, gasket, and then we have this another upper plate. This upper plate we have six well, and then those two black one, they can generate, they can transmit the electricity. So left and right, maybe minus and plus, the voltage is applied, and then if you incorporate this top bottom top one to this six well plate, they are combined, and then. If you culture the cell and, the, and the under the media, and if you put this uh, electroconductive uh, top plate, after putting this electricity generator, they start to generate the electricity. And then the cell can feel electricity. So nowadays, with help of Shanika, we are optimizing this machine, and with help of Songmin. So this is recently summarized uh, parameter summarized by Shanika. As you can see, angiogenesis, maturation, cardiocyte, biogenesis, regeneration in terms of many probe stem cell, neuropoint cell, bone marrow stem cell, IPC, or neurogenesis, cardiomyogenesis. They are using many voltage per se, per duration or frequency. So regarding this parameter, we also op optimize how we apply this electricity machine in nitrogen. Okay, thank you.